Richard, we are so thrilled to be here tonight to honor you. And we feel it's particularly appropriate that Ice Theatre of New York honor you because, in fact, you are a part of our history. If it hadn't been for you auditioning me and hiring me for Ice Follies those many years ago, uh, Ice Theatre probably would not be here. The same year that I joined Ice Follies, which was 1950, Richard Dwyer was signed up as well. They gave Richard the number that Roy Shipstead was doing for many years. So Richard Dwyer became the elegant, the smooth, with the top hat and tails. And we still, believe it or not, <laughs> we're the best of friends today. I guess if anything is my signature, it's uh, the beautiful bouquet of red roses. When I took over the role of Mr. Debonair from Roy Shipstead, I came out in my top hat and cane, strutted down the ice with them, and then a wonderful ice folly up would bring me out a dozen red roses, and I would proceed to go and give some lovely lady in the audience the roses. In the years I was with Follies alone, I probably gave away over 13,000 bouquets. That's still my tradition, to give the roses. My dad was from Nebraska, and he loved skating, and my mom was from Illinois. So we all went, to three kids and mom and dad, to the Pan Pacific uh, on a Friday night. And then my dad had so much fun, he said, well, we gotta do it again. So it, all of a sudden, it slowly became, every Friday night, we went skating at Pan Pacific. We loved it. I was so lucky, I was competing as an amateur, and I had worked my way up through the ranks from 1945 to 1950 had won the Novice Championship of the U.S. in 48, Junior Championship in 49, and then I came in third uh, behind Dick Button and Hayes Jenkins in 1950. Gene Kessler, who was the sports editor of the Sun-Times, suggested that I wear tails. He said, you remind me of Roy Shipstead. And that was when Arthur Wirtz, of course, owned that building. That was the first time I skated in tails. They went out and rented me a set of tails. I don't know where they found them because I was short and small and young. From then on, I started to use that as my trademark. And Roy Shipstead uh, saw me, of course, and they knew me and were following my career. When the time came that he retired, I was lucky enough to be the, the guy that they selected to take over the role of the debonair. And I was only 14 and a half, so they called me the young debonair. Richard just loved my father. They loved each other, you could really see it. My father did train Richard in my father's style, you know, his style of skating. I think my father took pride in doing that. Roy really worked with me and, uh, you know, taught me his mannerisms. We watched films and I grew into the role. In that era, the shows used to start at 8.30, which was really late. But as soon as my number was over, off I went. My mother was there to make sure that I got out of that building. And then, of course, the next morning, I was up at 6, because I had to be at school usually by 8.30. Jesuit High School in Los Angeles, Loyola High School, had set up for me to be able to attend normal classes in every city that the Ice Follies played. I went to 26 different high schools and I made many friends, and I still have some of those friends, if you can believe it. I really didn't have much time to get in trouble. I'll tell you, between doing the show and practicing and, and going to school, I was busy through those first three years of my career. And I stayed with them 30 years. And the only interruption was I was in the Army and I had to sign up for a six-year reserve status. When the Berlin crisis came along, I got recalled and went out to Fort Lewis, Washington, and was, you know, private Richard Dwyer, not the debonair. Ice Follies came to Seattle, and I was able to get two three-day passes and got to perform in the show. Very few of the Army guys knew much about skating, but Oscar Johnson set up for my battery that they could all come to the show in Seattle. So. They got a kick out of that. I think that the show kept improving because skating uh, developed and skaters got better. So no matter whether it was a feature role or part of the ensemble, 
The choreography got more difficult, more exciting, more creative, more interpretive. One year I had cocktail glasses, which the girls all stood by. There were six of them, and they were all different gowns, and it, it was spectacular. I was fortunate enough to skate pairs with some unbelievable partners, and every time I got a new partner, I had to learn new moves and lifts and tricks, and that kept me growing. The first partner was Marlene Miller. They brought her up the second year I was in the show. Then Georgiana Sutton. Then I skated with Leslie Goodman from Winnipeg. Then I skated with Dorothy Ann Nelson, who had won the uh, United States Pair Championships. Then Susie Behrens came in, who was on the world team, and second in the U.S., and I skated with her for 11 years. I got to skate with Barbara Wagner at one point. I can brag that I got to do a TV special and be Peggy Fleming's partner, and then I got to skate with Dorothy Hamill along the way. On my 50th birthday, 13 partners showed up. So it was really, it was exciting. And I think that contributed to my longevity of skating because I was challenged and I was still having fun learning new things all the time. And then I went to ice capades in 1981. Dick Palmer and George E.B. asked me if I would like to do guest shots. At first, I thought it would be very difficult to switch over to another company, but I got there and I was immediately at home. And they started sending me to cities like Boston, Chicago, Detroit, and I got right back into it. And then I started working with the Ice Capade Chalets and kind of promoting skating as a recreational sport and becoming a performer and, and getting in the entertainment end of it. But then I worked for Donald Trump in New York and did the, uh, ran the rink in Central Park. So I, I was having the time of my life. In 1989, the 50th anniversary of the Ice Capades, they asked me to go back full time. How can you beat that? Uh, you know, being able to still be the debonair, my gosh, by that time I know I'm an old man. But I still was doing paraskating. Gertie Desjardins came back and skated with me. Uh, and it, it was just marvelous. Charles Schultz had put me in. Snoopy wanted to be Mr. Debonair, Richard Dwyer. My notoriety and my uh, fan base grew that day because, uh, you know, people just loved that cartoon. And I did some shows for him up in Santa Rosa. And of course, he's one of my great heroes. I did a show in 1994, uh, the Christmas show with Karen Kresge and some wonderful stars. Sparky called me up. We called him Sparky. And he said, Richard, you know, I'd like to have you go to work for me. And I said, yes. And it was a great moment for me because I had five fabulous years, but I learned a lot from him. The whole career w worked out so perfect for me because I was in the, the golden age, the, the big production age. My life was able to touch all these superstars over a long time. And it is a thrill when you're in a 20,000 seat building to have people applaud and cheer you on, you see those people, they're smiling back at you, you know that they're having fun and that they're happy to see you out there. And that, that's a very rewarding uh, feeling. Richard, Ice Theater of New York is grateful to share this history with you. You are an embodiment of every single thing that we aspire to. You are our link to the history and legacy of the Ice Follies, Ice Capades, Holiday on Ice, the Royal Caribbean ships. You have been a part of every single one of those productions just because you've been you. And we are so grateful that you're part of us tonight. And we are so very happy to honor you. Thank you, Richard Dwyer.